Kalare rates be between 800 and 900. Jeez. At the <laughs> between 800 and 900 yeah. at the moment. Yeah. These animals are adapted to that, so they're okay. But okay. But the process, if you bring them into the area, you need to, you need to, to bring them into slowly into getting used to be bitten by the by the ticks, so that oh. they, so they can get used to our part. It and builds the, the immunity. The goals in that. Hi guys, so we've traveled what almost three hours to come to a very mountainous place, unlike where we went yesterday on the outskirts of Pretoria. Um, this place is mountainous, and I'm told we are in a Limpopo province. Listen, we are somewhere in Limpopo province, and it's beautiful. But the surprise here is this farm is the home of Kalahari Reds, and I can't wait for you to join me as we go in there. I've got a very friendly farmer. Hello, sir. Let me flip the camera to you. How are you? Good, uh, good in yourself. Oh, I'm good. May I know your name, sir? My name is Carl Lingenfelder. And yes, we're farm farming with Kalahari Reds. Okay, sir. So I wouldn't waste much time. I'm, I'm already blown to know you guys specialize only in Kalahari. So let's go in there. And I think I would start by asking what is so special about the Kalahari Reds? Kalari yeah. Reds is, is, as you know, it's a uh, specific breed of the boer goats. It's the ones that are completely red, uh, which make them harden to the sun. So you don't have a problem with, with white goats and eyelids, so they can handle sun better. Oh, so, nice. They can handle sun better. Yes, they can. Then that makes them perfect for the West African climate as well. Absolutely. We because, have a lot of sun. Because it's hardened it, and, uh, you know, it, it, it's a darker color. So mm -hmm. apart from that, it's a boer goat in, in essence. It's the same inside. It's all got the good qualities of boer goat okay boer goat meat which is or goat meat for that matter okay which are very healthy low yeah. in fat high yeah. in vitamins and minerals so it's yeah it's a very uh, nutritious meat okay and also the, the, the animals themselves are hardened what of their mothers the kalahari mothers what would you say about their maternal instincts are they good mothers they're very good mothers they could good mothers they also uh, breed uh, mostly twins even oh. triplets or quadruplets okay and they will look after them they would uh, look after them they will look after them they are very good mothers and uh, they uh, yeah, they, they mm -hmm. bring them up and, and then they wean and then they into the production cycle again okay so, shortly thereafter okay and you were telling me there is a reason you guys have chosen such a mountainous region to do this farming may i know the reason sir the reason is we always wanted to go farming so we bought this farm uh, uh -huh. this area is also called the water back okay water back meaning water mountains oh and out of this mountains it's natural water coming out of it okay 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 so, this so farm, that's free water source for the animals yeah it's not free but it's, it's there's quite a lot of water okay and then this farm has got 60 percent mountain 40 percent flat area ah. so when we bought it we had to look for something that can utilize the farm Yes. And that is why we, we decided on goats and specifically on, on, on the Kalahari Reds. Specific on the Kalahari Reds. I'm yes. told they love to climb goats in general, actually. Oh, they, they are. They, they just, it's just naturally for them. Wow. And, and the, the camps we've got, uh, uh, they, it's important for us, although they're on, on crawl now, mm -hmm. it's important for us to go out and, and do the natural grazing. Wow. I'm, I'm seeing a lot of demarcations. So before we even go in there, what goes on into the various demarcations you have? Yeah, we, we work through a system uh, mm -hmm. where, where we've got, uh, it starts all with the, the, the pregnant mothers and then... Okay, pregnant mothers. Pregnant mothers will go into one. Okay. Once, and just before, of course, they would keep more lucerne to, to help with more, more, uh, possible milk production. So lucerne is like our alfalfa, guys. That's correct. It is okay. alfalfa. It's nothing other than alfalfa. Oh, it's actually alfalfa. Yeah, it's just called Brilliant. lucerne in our area. Okay, in okay, okay. Really. Yeah, okay. It, it, it is alfalfa. Oh, nothing. great. Thank you. And then we, uh -huh. we've got a uh, lamb. Uh, hall mm -hmm. where we uh, got recently we we've, uh, had 180 kids of roughly 80 lambs wow. so you can work out the percentage wow is about wow wow and that <laughs> fell within 10 days so okay with, with 10 days we were busy uh -huh. and then they the mothers with the kids would stay okay and then thereafter we would separate them once we win mm -hmm. that the females and the males would go separate ways we've got specific yeah. crawls where yeah. we would feed them and to, to win and to adapt to one another i see and then thereafter it's important that they go to the to the open farm yeah so they will go out each and every day so i was going to ask you what kind of farming system do you think you're operating here is it intensive is it extensive 
what kind of farming system are you operating? We, we've got a hybrid of, of that because we're not okay. as extensive as other people where we just put them out and forget about them. Mm -hmm. No, we don't do that. They go okay. out. It's okay. important for us to, to adapt to the field and to be a hardened animal. Yeah, you prefer the hardened to animals. Harder, because otherwise I can't sell them uh, if they're just used to standing on a crawl. And Interesting. If they feed a lot. So it's very important for us. And that's, uh, mm -hmm. we pride ourselves on our track record. If we sell okay. goats out there, mm -hmm. people are happy with it because they can adapt even in what areas. We exported a lot to wow. various countries in, in Africa. I see. And, and people come back and ask me for them again because yeah. they, they, they can adapt to. How many animals are we looking at over here? Yeah, it's so vast I'm here to climb up there. Yeah. But how many generally are we looking at here? On the Kalara Reds, we're between 800 and 900. Jeez! At the moment. <laughs> between 800 and 900 yeah. at the moment. Yes, we, we're almost on, on production levels. So we, we're aiming to be on 400 productive ewes. Wow. So the last ones we're growing up should be in production by the end of this year. Wow. Which give us uh, roughly 1,200 lamps wow. per year wow. to sell. So that is that is where we want to, the level we want to operate on. But I think before I let you go, um, I saw a few being groomed. Yes. With this number you are dealing with, how do you groom such a number? Okay. Uh, firstly, which is important grooming, which you need to separate are the hooves. Because the hooves need to be looked after. But if they the go what? Out, the, the what? The hooves. Yeah, okay, the hooves. Yeah. Okay. So if they go out in the field, it's a natural grooming process. Oh, nice. Okay, but for the ones that stay in, so we go through, if it's getting too long, we cut them short and keep the, the foot in balance. Otherwise, they would walk inside or outside and it's not healthy for the animals. Interesting. So, so when you talk of grooming, the main focus is on the hooves. We start on hooves. That we do for all animals. Then the other animals, grooming is norm normally when we prepare them for auction or for a show. Because mm -hmm. we also do shows. I mean, we we, okay. we came fifth over all the world show last okay. year. With our herd, so oh. we're pretty, pretty proud on it. Okay. So, so yeah, we do that. But then just before an auction or before a show, we would do the grooming. Where you would do the grooming. Where we come them and we polish the horns. And yeah. Let them so how often should a livestock farmer groom the animals? Not, it's, it doesn't need to be an all, all and every day thing. It's just, yeah. I think it's just important for your animals to look good. To you know, look good. So use know, your discretion as a livestock farmer. Yeah, especially okay. if the air can become a bit long on the main. So, yeah. so there we, we cut it from time to time. So it doesn't look... Uh, so the goal actually for farmers like us in West Africa yes. is to scale it up as big as something like this. Yes. I, yes. And so I think, how do you deal with diseases, sir? That's very important. You need to, you need to be... Although goats are hardened, you need to look after them. So, so we've got uh, programs which we follow, okay. and, and then we look after our animals. I mean, as it is, every day, morning and every evening we mm -hmm. go through the, all the crawls. I see. And, and what sure. kind of diseases have you battled with? Look, the one thing here in this specific area is a, is a sickness called heart water. Mm, I've heard of heart water. Yeah, now heart water is, is, is coming off ticks, and uh, yeah. all these animals are adapted to that, so they're okay. But okay. there's a process. If you bring them into an area, you need to, you need to, to bring them into slowly into getting used to be bitten by the by the ticks, so oh. they so they can get used to our part. It and builds it, their immunity. It builds a natural immunity. So you are telling me so far all of them have built an immunity yes. to heart water. Yes, that's good. Eh? And there are different practices which I need to, to point out. Yeah. Certain guys in this area follow a process where every 14 to 21 days mm -hmm. they give them uh, antibiotics. Okay, to, antibiotics. As a yeah. Every, and we, as CMW, as we are yes. against that. We don't want to unnecessarily give medicines, antibiotics. Oh, that's to, great. So it's for us more important that they can be adapted. What of dewormers and vaccinations? Abs absolutely. We do deworm, uh, pastorella, which is you know, okay. uh, um, something which you need to do. Yeah. And then deworming. Uh, deworming also important. Deworming, you need to look at the, at the eye. Yeah. To see whether it's it's pale or it's red. Yeah. Uh, so that what what we selecting again is against animals that can be hardened against worms. So okay. we don't want to give worm medicine okay. because okay. the worms very easily it'll get uh, immune against the, the yeah. The You're right. So aside heart water, sir. Yes. What other diseases should we be on the lookout for and try to fight against? Well, look, um, like I said, I think pastorella is important because I mean they, they they get colds and flu, so that is okay. uh, uh, any small stock can easily die of pneumonia. And oh, pneumonia. Yes. 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 So, so what do you think causes that, though? 
Well, I, th I think it's my exposed to, to bad weather and like a human being. Dust and all that's of like that. human being. Okay. So, that, so that is something which we do. And then the warming is very important. And then one thing that, that we know, if especially a guy where your goats are a bit concentrated, mm -hmm. is coccidiosis. Coccidiosis, okay. Yeah. So, so that okay. is something you need to test for and to... Mm. to, to Test Are you something. a vet? You are so knowledgeable. I'm not a vet. I'm just a farmer. <laughs> How many years of practice do you have? We are only in this business of farming for the red cat cat between five and six years now. Between five and six years yes. now. Yeah. This is amazing. Your last words, because I am recording you obviously, and for uh, West African farmers, yes. for whom we are here to select your sure. goats for, please give them a word of assurance for me. That's where we are it's truly the home of kalahari reds and say something very confident about your animals for me right this is most definitely kalahari red area that's our main focus that's okay. we concentrate yes. like i say between eight and nine hundred we are want to establish on a herd uh, on a EU unit of 400 mm -hmm. uh, we're very proud of our stuff we're doing well on shows so we've got good quality animals good quality animals you heard yes. it guys <laughs> but very important it's adaptable it it's is adaptable. something which I can yeah. with confidence go and sell and we had very good comebacks in South Africa, yeah. even in Northern Cape, which is a very ardent area wow. where after a year or two, the animals would be thinner, but they still survive. They, they still can. survive. I like how you keep talking of the adaptability. It's, that's, it's that's, really strong. That's important because yeah. uh, it is so that there are many farmers that farm these kind of animals on small pieces of ground. Mm -hmm. So they are actually feedlot farmers. And, wow. and uh, that is to me, in my opinion, and I say that uh, uh, with a bit of reservation, but it's something you need to look out for. Thank you so much, Carl. Thank okay. you. <laughs> I'm going to just familiarize myself with the place and you have a beautiful farm. Thank you. Thank you so much. Bye. Hi guys, so it's been a very insightful morning here. I've already mentioned to you where we are, the home of Kalahari Reds. All I know is we are in the Limpopo province. We are not at Pretoria right now. But hey guys, I yeah, that's what goes into the good selection. And this farm is one of the largest commercial skill farms I have ever seen in my entire life. The 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 man and his wife and kids are wearing what's between 800 and 900 Kalahari Reds here. And he mentioned that is their specialty, but they have a few sunning goats in here to support the mothers because these Kalahari Reds are meat goats. And so they have the dairy goats here to support the mothers who sometimes give birth to even triplets. Yes, he says um, the least number they get here is two. He has talked highly about how adaptable his animals are and I don't doubt that. You should see the rocky terrain here, the mountains and mm, they chose it because he says animals love to climb the goats especially so he has already taken us literally through what goes on here and we have another session with him where he talked about nutrition i would make sure that you have that one because it's really really eye-opening oh by the way they call alfalfa lucine and every farmer i have interacted with so far speaks so highly of it and this particular man has also spoken very highly of hay and its importance so when we tell you guys that you should get some hay we are not marketing to you guys we are not we are in south africa and it's happening here as well. They are seeing the importance of it. So I'm going to flip my camera around and show you around. Okay. So I am at his, what I would call the feed production center and different bales of hay. Let me just flip the camera around and take you around. It's beautiful. And I have to do this with you. So let's go. All right. So before me right now is this huge bales of hay, like huge. Interestingly, they buy their hay they don't produce it like we do so he mentioned how important roughage is to the gut health of the animals and you can see it here you see it's right here interestingly enough the they have these round ones and they have these square ones look at these square ones so he tells me these ones are like what i would call our hay very nutritious you know, I wouldn't say semesial grass. He mentioned his own grass in Africans. I'm not going to try to mention that word. But these ones are very nutritious hay, as you can see, all around. But these round ones, he says they are just pure roughage. 
pure roughage which is very 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 important for the gut health of your animals guys so i'm um, i don't know at this point i don't know what else to say to convince you that you should have some hay in the feed of your animals actually it's winter here and yeah that's what farmers most farmers depend on and the pellet feed as well so i'll take you to his um pellet production center very soon but guys this is it this is it this is it we are the home of kalahari reds all right guys so i am at the feed production center yes they produce their own pellet feed here it's it's mind-blowing so i'm gonna flip the camera around and show you the technology some people are using you know elsewhere in the world to take care of feed challenges nutritional challenges in in livestock agribusiness if by now you've not bought into the advocacy for a sustainable source of feed for your animals listen you are not serious about doing this livestock agribusiness at all i wouldn't mean words for today you are not you are not so by now you should be thinking of cultivating your own grass so you can what in future process it into hay he uses some of his grass as well to produce the pellets yes i would show you how green it is and what contributes to that actually it is beautiful and this is the future this is the future so i'm going to flip the camera and show you what is going on here guys so this this is the pellets machine basically So this farm um, actually reminds me of home, <laughs> the demarcations they have. Um, the man said they are practicing the hybrid system of farming, so both intensive and extensive. So guys, <laughs> for those expecting your Kalaharis, don't worry, they are, they are really going to blend in so smoothly, so seamlessly. They have these demarcations and I really wish the camera could like go all up there but guys forgive me it's it can't this is this is, i think the best i can capture with what i have here because you see the mountains it climbs up like that so you have these demarcations a lot of them scattered all over the ranch moving towards the mountains upwards because that that is where their animals actually go wild and free and i just want to tell west african farmers practicing the actual intensive farming that you guys are doing great you are doing great and um, we all know the intensive farming system comes with a lot of challenges it requires a lot of constant attention the demands can be crazy because we don't have such vast lands and we also sometimes can't afford to let the animals just go wild because hey some human pests might catch it <laughs> yeah so you guys this is just an encouragement to you you are doing great you are doing very great and with what we have seen in west africa if we also have like access to such huge lands uh, i don't imagine the potential that could come out of that but this is just to say kudos to you guys you guys are doing great and we really hope that you benefit from the constant education we bring your way you've seen how we visited farms and they are doing all kinds of farming on even a plot of land it is amazing this is to tell you it is possible so keep keeping at it it's possible guys so this is like the gestation pen kind of basically mothers and their very little babies this is it i mentioned earlier about the demarcation it's beautiful yeah they are doing the hybrid system of farming the intensive and the extensive they are big on their feet guys genetics isn't enough if you have the best breeding genetic and you don't feed its nutritious meal you're going to lose out on the potential you can get out of this you are so please let's be mindful of that let's be mindful of that <laughs> 